Hi guys, this is Manpreet Nagi from Mountain House and Tracy Neighborhoods. I'm here today with the mold inspector, Tim, and he's from, what's the company's name, Tim? I'm from Rapid Response Remediation. And he, can you tell something about yourself to us, please? Sure, I've, um, so first of all, we are a full service remediation company and we service the Bay Area. And we were called out today to do an inspection on this home for either water or mold issues. So in this inspection, I myself learned a lot. We think there are a lot of things happening, but actually not much going on. I would like to share all that knowledge and information from the inspector here, mold inspector Tim. So Tim, my question is, in a house, when you look for a mold, what are the areas where there is a high probability of having mold and how does it look like? So we always go to the water sources. That's gonna be your bathrooms, your kitchens, um, near showers. Those are the common areas for um, any type of water damage. You need water in order to have mold. So we always go to the water sources and we look for um, leakage around, you know, seal plates, um, near shower enclosures, uh, wax seals on the toilet. So we measure moisture levels with, um, we have an array of uh, meters, non-invasive and invasive ones. In this case, we use the non-invasive and we measured um, moisture levels around the toilets, around the sinks, uh, around the shower enclosures, and they were all normal. So those are the first signs we, we kind of tend to look for is moisture levels around water sources. And if there is a mold in the house, is it visible through ice? Can we see that? Not necessarily. The first thing we um, kind of sense is an odor. You're gonna have a, a mildew odor. Um, and that's the first sign of mold in the house. Other than that, mold is pretty much invisible unless it's been going on for a while and you start seeing growth. It's either greenish, starts a greenish stage and then turns black. What does it do to us? How does it affect our health? Uh, your, it can cause those usually in the elder or, or younger babies or toddlers. It can cause um, respiratory problems. You know, you're sneezing, headaches, runny nose. And that's high concentration. Some are more sensitive than others. So you're, it's gonna be the, the elderly or the younger that their immune systems are either not built up or weakened. And so they're gonna have a more adverse effect than a healthy person. But it all comes down to high levels of concentrations of mold spores. So to affect our health, do you think the mold will be visible to our eyes or still invisible mold can affect our health? Oh, and give these symptom, symptoms. Yes, invisible mold can affect your health. So okay. I, I recommend to have a good air circulation in your home. Um, leave windows on nice days, leave windows open, turn your fans on, um, don't keep it all tightened up. My favorite was when he shared that in the restrooms, in the bathrooms while taking shower, when we don't turn on the exhaust fans, that is the biggest thing which affects our bathrooms and we can get uh, mold in there. So his recommendation on that is to use the exhaust fans all the time in the bathrooms, right? Absolutely. Use the exhaust fan, especially if you like hot showers and it's a small area. You're going to get a lot of steam and it sits on the walls. Okay, and one more important question is, does the weather affect mold? Different yes. weather, different levels of mold in the house. Yes, you're gonna have, uh, during the springtime, pollinating time, you're gonna have a lot of spores in the air. And during the rainy times, you're gonna have a cleaner air because rain is heavy and it settles the, the mold spores and everything else outside down. So that means when the home buyers are buying houses in different months of the year, you should pay attention to which month you're buying the house and it is going to affect the mold report. Is that correct, Correct, Tim? correct. Yeah. yeah, so that is a lot of information and I'm going to actually share contact of Tim in my video here as well in the comments. I have really loved the way he explained me everything. It's a lot of knowledge. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much for all the knowledge and the time you spend with us. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks. It's very common. Common for these type, whenever I see water around here, 
um, it's either the sprinkler, and you said there's a bathroom right above, right? Or some type of uh, toilet or drain, okay? And a lot of times it will just roll on the seams because that's a seam there. So there's no house that's 100% level. Sure. And so this is where, the, where it was tilted at and the water could have rolled. So but how do we check if it is uh, dry now? Oh, okay, perfect. So no, no noise is good no, news. Yeah, no noise is good news. It's dry. So what is the probability of... So you... now, if it was a supply line or your sprinkler line, that's a constant um, line that's active. Okay. So just, and, and you would still have water. Um, if it was a toilet or any type of supply lines, there, the supply lines are constantly on, you would have moisture. Could be drain line. Now that's only when it, the water's on and it's draining. Um, but other than that, I think uh, there's no there's no active leak. So that's what we look for, active leaks. Active leak, it's okay. not an active leak. So my my suggestion is you just keep an eye on it when you buy the house. I don't smell any type of mold or any mildew in here. Um, again, it's more of a just not being used kind of odor. Uh, you do have ventilation. Vent, ventilation, one vent here. Mm -hmm. um, Keep those vents clean, guys, so that you know there is proper ventilation in the garage or right. the areas. And we are checking again. No noise is good news. No noise is good news. Good. So you're good. I don't see anything else at issue down below. Okay. So close to the shower in that build-up wall is the most important. Yeah, all around the, again, you got the same type here. This is a caulking around here. Mm -hmm. You're going to have it around your shower pan. And so you always want to make sure that there's Everything no cracks. Is sealed. It's sealed. No because, water intrusions. Right, you look for any cracks in your grout lines, anything like that. And you have a crack, you'll have seepage. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see the white caulking around the fixture. Water, what are the sources of getting water behind this shower wall? It's going to be a supply line. Okay, so either the supply line will have leak or yes. the water can go well, you, in from here. Not necessarily. Not... It, it can go here downward mm -hmm. because your water is pouring on the wall. And mm -hmm. if this is not sealed, uh -huh. it can get behind here. Behind. Yes. Okay. But, you're good. It's clean. When your shower's on, and I'm just going to turn it on real quick. So you have a live line that's supplying this handle right here. Okay? But this one doesn't go on. It's a separate one. It doesn't go on until you turn the shower on. And so, if you had any type of leak going on with that, it would roll down and this would be the first place for you to see any type of water damage and again we look for um, if there was previous water or slowly we go low we look low and look for any kind of discoloration or swelling on the baseboards even if they if someone tried to paint over them you're going to still have the swelling on it mm -hmm. and you don't have any so it's perfectly clean it looks like original baseboard um, and it's good. Okay, now I'm going to go get one meter just to test that floor. And that's what looks like this is. It was a, maybe a leak from a drain. It didn't hit the back panel. And again, that's just the skin. And we look for any type of discoloration on the boards, which you have none. And on the side panel. So, okay. Can you explain, Tim, what is this device doing there? So, this is a non invasive moisture meter, so it's sending signals. It, it goes about an inch and a half and then it bounces back up. And it's going to tell you if you have moisture in a product. So, right now we're, we're measuring wood. 
And so what I did, we see that that is an affected area because you have all this swelling right here. And this, you can say, is a non-affected area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the non-affected is reading about 7%. Okay, an affected area or is about the same. Okay. So then our conclusion is there's no moisture in it. Okay. If it happened, it dried out already, and it was a topical. Okay. And it didn't go any further than that because I can tell you these are the hardest to dry because it's again it's compressed wood. Okay. So it just hit the finish on it, swelled up a little, it's dry. If there was any type of mold, because this would be the first place for it to grow because it takes so long to dry, you would see blackening or something like that, discoloration, a lot of discoloration. So that's that that happened. It was what we call a sudden loss. Maybe it sat for a few days and then they got it and it just bubbled. Okay. So anything when the color is green, it's a good news here. Yes, no, anything no in green is good. Okay. Correct. And so again, we always do what we call a non-effective. Mm -hmm. So even the non-effective is a little bit higher mm -hmm. than that area. So that's good. And so you're going to have different, it can be a little bit cooler here coming into the doorways, right? So just like tiles. So here we're going to do a scale on the plaster. So here you're at you know, 6%. Mm -hmm. And if it was wet underneath, that thing would jump to 20, 30%. Okay. <clears throat> so then we go close to Given tubs. the house is vacant for like... You know. It still doesn't. So here we're consistent. So we go, we go to a, what we would call a non-water source. So we know there's no... So under here you have your plumbing that's coming up through mm -hmm. the, the floor and so this would be the first place if there's any type of leak slow leak you're gonna see some jumping in in moisture levels and it's mm -hmm. dry everything's good so what i would normally do okay where's a non-water area right here and it's the same so this is what we would call a non-affected area and then we would go close to a water source area. Let's do the toilet area. Mm -hmm. So remember right by the... So the wax seals were leaking. This would be the first place close to the toilet because it's seepage, it goes this way. But even if uh, this house is closed for, I don't know, a couple of months or whatever, uh -huh. you would still see the signs? Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. Well, if you don't see the signs, you have an odor. You would have an odor. And again, the odor is, you would have a mildewish odor. So those are, those are signs that we, we look for discolorations and such. Um, we're not seeing any of that. Sure. So and right underneath is the garage. Okay. That's where the... Okay, so here, we'll do a timeout. I'm going to go get a different meter to check your... Subfloor and carpet area. Okay. I'll be right back. Hey guys, Nagi here. I'm here actually with um, mold inspector Tim. He's great. Um, the reason we are doing this small video here is so that you guys know if you're getting mold inspections done, use the right person who has the knowledge of inspection and doing the right stuff. I am going to share this video with you. Hopefully it helps you with the information. I will be making more episodes of this and share with you. All right, thanks. Those are voids or there could be vents nearby, which on the exterior in your attic area, you have vents could be every, um, every 25 feet, every 10 feet okay. on the perimeter. And that's to vent the house, the vent upstairs. So you're so saying that the 